it it definitely is time for full circle what but yeah family circle and i have certified a makeup artist Anne in the building karibu sana Anne. thank you so much glad to have you here thank you you know growing up we envied girls on your likona mwanya it was beautiful to go to your african beauty and then come up on a beauty spots mahali zinaonekana wacha beauty spots za kutafutililia kwa miguu kama kwa uso yani your mwanya is so beautiful thank you so much thank you so much and um maybe before we get into the story introduce yourself tell us everything that it is that you do because you also do some bit of charity as well yes. because your camera so basically my name is Anne Monja or Makeup by Monja Anne. Uh, I am a professional makeup artist and uh, I also run a non profitable organization called Beauty in the Closet where we do free makeup workshops and just mentor girls and we also just uh, give them sanitary towels mm -hmm. and it's not all about girls but it's also we focus on also the male. Okay. Yes. And um before all of this you grew up in a home that um, wasn't conducive for you and maybe we can just go back to the beginning um where did you grow up how was that like for you how was home um i grew up in eldoret mm -hmm. and uh, i was in an average family i wouldn't i won't say that i grew up uh, having life difficult, mm, mm. it was just fair enough. Mm. Middle class. Yeah, middle class because my mom was a teacher, mm. uh, me growing up. And uh, most of the time I used to see my father beat up my mom because mm -hmm. my dad used to drink a lot. And uh, that was something that was paining me as a child. Because I remember there was this one time we were just at, at a family meeting and I, ju I just told him, you know what i don't love you just because of what you do to my mother mm. and um were you the only child no i wasn't the only child mm -hmm. we were two i have an elder sister okay and uh so gr after some time like when i was six around six years old he tried to rape me mm -hmm. and uh i thank god that he never it, it never happened my mom just caught her on the act mm. and uh at that packet particular moment uh, my mom was so devastated just not knowing what to do because this is a man that he called a husband and um, he's your father and he's my father also yeah and uh, he never knew what to do so he went and just called my grand like my grandparents also oh, mom went and called grand yeah your, your grandparents yeah to so that they may be able just to find out what can we do at this particular moment and uh, so they decided to separate. Okay, because of that incident and many more. Many more, yes. other, uh, many other is incidents. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up with my mom like all along, but again, when I was in class six, I was again raped. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is now the second time and it, it initially happened. It's, was it uh, a different person? It was a different person. It was a butchery guy mm, okay, around. Someone that you knew. Uh, someone that I, I never knew him mm -hmm. that much, but he was just a guy that uh, I will go and mm -hmm. I'll go by Mtura when my mom sends me or anything else. That is what I, like that is the only relationship we had with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so he 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 raped me, and I was so much I never knew what to do. And uh, so my mom was always there for me. I really thank God for her because she was always just there to encourage and um did you did you go tell mom about this i had to i okay. had no one else to tell mm -hmm. what happened mm -hmm. so i had to because uh if i never told her what singe joy really really so nikamwambia and she took me to hospital mm -hmm. and to, to kind of hapa don home uh, to the police station just to uh, write write the statement mm. to report and everything else but all those incidents left something in me like she quarter had just she quite will ten after that no a little rocker oh a little rocker after eh. you can uh, uh, okay. a little rocker and so we till now we've never seen him like i have uh, never mm. seen him because i've lived in that estate for for quite some times. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so after which the, those all those incidents created a wound in me, because first I used to ask myself why me. Yeah. Why why me? Am I different? Mm-hmm. And um, did you um, go for counseling after that? Am I just talk to mom? I never went for counseling. My mom, I just told my mom, and she was like, "You know what? You'll be okay." Okay. And mom, they, they feel sometimes like they can take <laughs> the pain away from yeah. you. Yeah. And she was like, "You know what? You'll be okay." And I was like, "So I'll be okay." But uh, so b- being in school, I had a disorder in terms of I had a reading disorder called dyslexia. Okay. And uh, having that disorder, my mom used to understand, really much understand me. Mm-hmm. And she never compared me with any student or mm-hmm. anything else. Mm-hmm. So I went through my primary school and I went to high school and I finished. Mm-hmm. But each and every time, uh, there, was, there was a longing for affirmation. Mm-hmm. Because I always wanted just to ask myself, who am I different? I don't have a father. Like... I will do things just to get that attention, attention from people. Yeah. I will, uh, if a guy tells me he loves me, mm-hmm. that will be just everything, you know. Mm. I would, uh, my craving point was just for attention. And love. And love. Yeah. Yes, I get love from my mother. Yes, I get love from everyone around me, but no one understands what I'm looking for. And I myself also never understood what I was looking for. Okay. So I got into having early sex as a child. How I'm old were you? As a, I'll say around 17. Mm-hmm. So I began uh, having sex at that age using mm-hmm. drugs. What Be- kind of drugs? I used weed. <laughs> were you, were you, were you, why are you laughing? <laughs> were you, were you in a boarding school? I'm a Ulikwa day school. So because boarding school might be difficult to. I was in day, okay. Uh, in high school, I was in boarding school, but mm-hmm. in um, primary, I was in day school. Ah, then okay. also the friends I kept, like when I was in primary school, I used to work with high schoolers. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Eh, <laughs> chesana. How Okay. So, I'll I'll just want to just be around people who will. Uh, my friends were just the wrong influence, you mm, know. Mm, mm. And uh, did you feel like if I do the things they're doing, then I'll be cooler. I'll be accepted into their clique. Probably because the young ones do not know these things that the older ones are doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted the attention. Yeah. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be loved. Did you mom know? know that you're already using drugs? Oh, My I, mom was not quite aware of anything. Okay. Like, she never knew anything. And your older sister? Well, no, re- not really. Not really as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She, it, she was... Suspicious. Suspicious, but very not sure. Like... Not uh, maybe maybe not uh-huh. but not th- not that certain. Okay. And um, when I always say this, uh, so in high school I be- like I began sleeping around and uh, I have slept. You know I, I I say this with so much remorse and so much. I have slept with more than ten guys. And it's not just uh, something to laugh about. And it's not something just to <laughs> be happy about. So this started at 17? Yes. Okay. And uh, every time I'll have sex with a different with a guy, there's just an emptiness, a longing for something more, yeah. a desire for more that I never knew what it, what it was. And my life was a cycle. Mm-hmm. Every time. I w- it's like walking around... A circle that you you, ne- you never know the beginning from the end. Yeah. And uh, so around 2016, mm-hmm. I got pregnant. Were you already out of high school? I school was. Time? Yeah. I, by, by then I was out of high school. Okay. I got pregnant, and uh, by then, uh, 2015, 2014, my mom had passed. Holy. And uh, losing her was such 
uh, just bad moment for me because I would, she was a friend. Even if, even if I was that a bad girl or anything else, she was a friend. I could go just talk to her and she could understand me because she never compared me with anyone. Mm. And her dying, everyone used to tell me, you know what, you'll be fine. You'll be okay, you know. And me grief, like I never, like I, I used to try just to be strong for people around me. So I never grieved the, the mm. right way. Mm. Six months later, I started my grieving process. It took me one and a half years just to grieve. Because I was always afraid just not to uh, be found crying mm. because my grandmother is around and she'll be like, why are you crying? And I'm like, I, mi I miss mom. I always tried to be strong for other people around me, yeah. not for me to go through the process. Mm. And that ilinikula sana. Yeah. You'd never had a release. I never had a release. Mm. Mm. And... Um, so, 26, uh, so uh, 2015, my mom had passed. I, I finished school in 2014. Mm -hmm. And 2016, I got pregnant. I was in my first year in, in, the, in the university. Ah, great. And uh, so when I got pregnant, I told my aunt, my relatives, mm -hmm. because they were the ones who were responsible for me. Yes. And uh, they were like, you will not abort. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I was like... The minute I knew I was pregnant, I was like, you know what, I'll adapt. I like, I'll just abort. Uh, uh, yeah, that was my easiest. That was your. <laughs> that was your way out. That was my way so out. So had you figured out how, where to do it? Uh, I had uh, thought of Mary stops. Mm -hmm. I had done some research and everything else. Okay. But the money to finance that thing was quite cumbersome. Like it was a huge amount of money, okay. and I was just only in the university. First year. First year, mm. you know. And it was I was only just using pocket money. Okay. So my aunt was like, you know what, you will not do this. You will take responsibility of your actions and we will be we will work with you through the journey. And I was like so I decided, you know what, uh tell the baby daddy. Mm -hmm. So I went and told the baby daddy. Um Was he also in camp? Or he was no, he was not in, he, he was, was not working. In, he was working, okay. So I went and told the, 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 the guy in question, you know what, I am pregnant. And he was like, you know what, it is okay. Okay. So him saying it is okay, there was the relief that I was okay. Yeah, we are not, I'm not alone. I'm not are, alone. I'm really not alone in this journey. Mm -hmm. So five months down, the, five months down my pregnancy, mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I was going to visit a friend in Naivasha. And uh, I had, like, d during that night, I had a, the pre, pre labor. Mm. So I was taken to hospital. Okay. So just to, to they, they saw the baby was okay and everything was fine. So then I, uh, so after that, uh, they, they said they'll do fa further checks. Okay. Then they realized that the child had some deformities. At five months. At five months. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, we'll get you some water. Would you like some warm? Yeah. Warm, warm? Okay. Betty, some warm water? Thanks. So. Mm -hmm. So, okay, um. I real so I th the child had deformity. One arm was uh short uh, was short. Both arms the hakwana both arms and one limb was short. So no no hands. Yeah, and one limb was short. Okay. The le the left leg. Okay. And uh, when I was told this at the hospital at Naivasha, I felt like dunia ifunguke ni ingiendani. Because I knew not like I was like why why me. What would just the time that I'm just coming into terms with accepting this pregnancy? Why me? And I remember I told my aunt, you know what? I can't do this. I really can't do this. And they were like, you know what? You're stronger than you think. And them telling me I'm strong, and I'm like, 
I'm really not strong mm -hmm. enough to do this. Mm -hmm. So I went back home. Uh, I came back uh, just to, at uh, Ukuivi Hospital mm -hmm. for further checks, just to confirm. Uh, just to confirm it is really true. Mm -hmm. And uh, true to the fact was it was true. Yeah. So I was so now I was advised just to um to to begin just taking calcium and and everything to else to the help the the bone formation and everything else. Mm -hmm. At that particular point, my auntie told me, tell the baby daddy in question. Oh, so you hadn't, you told I auntie first? Yeah. Okay. So we, we planned and meet. Uh, so I just told him, you know what? I'll, I won't cut, let, I won't go shortcuts. Let me just cut to the chase. Uh, your child has some deformity. Guess what she told me? He has never fathered such a child. Excuse me? <laughs> he has never fathered such a child okay. and I was like what your auntie was there no it was just you and him. it was me and him like you have never fathered such a so it means you have been fathering other children yeah so you're very confident saying that you've never you can never yes because you know you know, we're going to take a very short commercial break and um, for you to sip that water as we pay our bills. We will be right back. You can send in your words of encouragement. You can share your stories with us. Be part of this conversation. Um, our SMS line is triple one triple four triple one. It's just going to cost you a shilling to do that. Switch TV KU on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. We'll be right back with Anne after this break. Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mukali. A very good morning to you. Remember, you can be part of this conversation, sending your words of encouragement, uh, sending your questions. Um, just be with us as we walk this journey with Anne. Just a short recap if you just joined in, if you just joined into the conversation. Anne um, is a certified makeup artist uh, who grew up in a well of family and uh, attempted rape by the father, separated family. Um, got raped at the age of six and um, reported mom passed on, got into a uh, company longing for something that uh, she says it was just a void. But then in campus first year she got pregnant and we've gotten to a point where she's been told that her baby at five months um, has some sort of deform d d deformities and um, Presenting this information to the baby daddy, the baby daddy is like, I, I have never. That is not the kind of seed I put out into the world. <laughs> in, in other words, that's what he said. How, how did that conversation continue on from there? Uh, for me, I just walked out of the room because I had nothing else to say. Because yeah. I have spoken my mind and you telling me this, then what should I do next? Okay. And um, at that part, when I was walking out, like I felt a sharp, like I'll, I'll, I'll say a sword piercing in, in between, like, and hatred was just born. Like I felt I hated that child just from there. And uh, even during, uh, during my pregnancy, like there was just time I'll never have the connection you know the the way you can have a connection with your your child in your womb i never felt that connection all through my nine months like five five six seven eight till yeah. delivery yeah i never had that connection mm -hmm. i was just but just a carrier and um so some so uh, when around my six months or seven months so me just thinking what then should i do yeah in regards to this because to the hon like just being honest, and yeah. 
I, I didn't want just anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, me telling my aunties what the response of the guy and everything else, mm-hmm. they were like, you know what, uh, let's get your counselor and just you go through the counselling process. But even going through the counselling process, I never felt anyone understood me. Yeah. And so it was just one time that we were driving off from church with my auntie. Then I saw along Langata Road, a children's welfare organization. So with my curiosity, I just asked myself, what is this all about? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went and Googled about it. And I found out that it is the, bo- it is the children's body in Kenya. So I was like, does it do mother offer? Does it take up children for adoption? Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? I'll do this. Because my first option was, if this won't work, if me giving up my child for adoption won't work. So you'd already decided that that is what you will do? That is what I will do. Okay. Uh, or, like, it is just normally, like, you know, I'll, I'll give birth. Uh, I walk out from the hospital as nothing has ever happened. But deep inside me was, I wanted to do the right thing. And I think that was the most traumatizing season in my life mm-hmm. because doing the right thing is always painful. Yeah. And um, so I went to the, to, the, to, the, to the office and just inquired and they took me th- through counseling. And they were like, okay, so wh- why, do I wa- why do you want to just give up your child for adoption? Will, after 10 years, will you ca- come back and reclaim the child? Mm-hmm. I was like, I want this child to go to a place where he will find love. I cannot love that child anymore. Mm-hmm. I just want, like, uh, so that uh, I may have the peace of mind. Yeah. I can strung him to death. I can wake up in the middle of the night. Because and just, of the hatred that you yes. were feeling. Okay. And I never wanted to figure that point. Mm. And they were like, you know what? Uh, this is not the, the reason you are giving up your child for adoption. Mm-hmm. So after three days of counseling and going to those sessions, wakakata. Uh, okay. <laughs> so Wali Kata and I was like, where? My plan my plan B will work. Plan B was? Uh, I, I out. give out I give birth and just walk out of the hospital. Walk out of the hospital. So when when I was going for my ca- for my just uh for my pre prenatal prenatal clinic, mm-hmm. so one of the secretaries was just a close friend and she was like, I have seen your file. Can you have a talk? And I was like, why not? So we sat and talked about it. And she was like, what are you planning? Nikombe, I went to uh, CCK and they refused to take up my child for adoption. And uh, so what's your next plan? I was like, you know what? Since I'll be giving birth to at KNH, I will just walk out from the hospital and like nothing had happened. And she was like, I know social worker. Uh, let me call her and see how she can be of help. Because there is a way out of all this. This is like whatever they did wasn't right. And I was like, it's okay. But if it really doesn't work. I'll still walk away. I'll still walk away. And so the social worker was called and we had a very good candid conversation. And uh, I always say God works in a mir- miraculous way. So when, uh, when now the social worker was now calling the same office that I was in, uh, they sent someone different. Mm-hmm. No, like they sent someone totally different. And so she came to Kenyatta and we had a chat. And she was like, you're in, in our place, yeah. Uh, this wasn't re- re- really light. And she said, we will take up this case and uh, in two weeks time, I will get back to you. And in my mind, I was like, ah, this won't really happen. You know, I, w- I had already given up. So two weeks later, she, she reached back to me and she was like, hi, Anne. Uh, can you kindly come to the office and send the papers? I cried because all I wanted was just for that, for the child to just, to be in a place where he will feel loved because I never, I was in a position not to offer that love. And, uh, did you go sign the papers? Yes, I went and signed the papers. Okay. But this is all before you gave birth gave birth because it, it was a preparation before and then there was something afterwards okay so 
since I was doing a cesarean and it was really not a normal bath, so they wouldn't allow me go through the normal bath. So thirty eight at around thirty eight weeks, I went to hospital and gave birth uh, through a CS. And um, after which the child, the child was taken up. Yeah. I never saw that kid because at the papers I really. I really wrote very clear instructions and I was just telling my social worker, please tell the doctors, you know, uh, while uh, well, delivering the baby was it is mm. just at a at a very humble request. Okay. And they did that. Okay. So I never like who the people who saw my kid was my relatives. Mm. Uh, delivery. So like it they, they were the ones who saw the kid. And uh, so, before before going to the CS, just giving birth, uh, I always say that was where my life turned around. Because just someone came and walked in and just told me, do you know when you're walking into that place, you will, you, you will never come alive if you don't have Jesus. And... Uh, having a flashback of how I've lived my life, I yes. was like, it is really true. Mm. And that was, in that instant, I made a decision, you know what, I'll give my life to Christ. Walking towards just going to the theater. And I always tell people that was the best decision I've ever made in my life. And uh, after which the child was taken up for, for adoption, and I began the healing process. It was really not an easy journey yeah. because no one understood. It. Some relatives will just come and say, even seeing me in hospital, and they're like, why did you do such a thing? Mm. And I'm like, why? Like, why are you not understanding where I'm coming from? It is not about me. It is about him. Yeah. And Maybe it's about me, but him being in a safer place is much better. better than being around me. I think it was very mature of you to understand that you will never be able to do that. And instead of walking out, doing the right thing for the baby, to be able to go to a place where they will be loved and taken care of. Yeah. So when you came out and you started your healing journey and counseling and understanding what it is that you have done, and now you are changed, did you go back to school eventually? Yeah, eventually I went back to school. Finished. What were you pursuing? I, I was pursuing hospitality. Okay. Uh, but I, I never practiced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I makeup, <went> took, <laughs> makeup took over. Makeup took over and... Uh, I love doing it. Okay. It gives me a purpose. It gives me it gives me just fulfillment in mm -hmm. uh, doing makeup. Mm -hmm. So through my healing process, you know, one thing I, I told God, you know what? Um, as I'm doing this, I'm not doing it alone. I don't want to, to be hearing cries of the baby, you know. Like those are the things that people are telling me, you know what? You'll never have peace. Mm, you'll never have peace you'll be triggers mm -hmm. and because you gave up your child that is so inhuman of you mm. like i used to get so much backlash and i was like you know what god mm -hmm. you knew my heart yeah you really knew my heart mm -hmm. and it was from a from a from a good place yes and um i got healing like i never had those moments of torture or sleepless night i never had them do you share this story? Do you share it with other young girls? That is what I do. With your charity? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is when I now began the healing process and everything else. And that is now where I got my purpose. And every time I say it is born to empower all. Yeah. I will reach out to the unrich. And I always tell the young girls that I mentor, you know what? Stop looking for things that will fade away. To fill that void. To fill that void. Mm. 
because I was at that place looking for things to add to just uh, to make me feel good. But at the end of the day, the Bible says all things are vanity. Yeah. And indeed it is vanity. Let's talk about your foundation for a bit and um, the, the girls that you mentor. You also raise um, funds for them. The peer sanitary pads is it just Kibera? I'm a um, girls' water when you work up places marginalized. Uh, so I have been in Kibra for now two years, uh, since 2020, mm -hmm. and uh, um, with uh, with uh, the goal, my end goal is just to expand. And uh, every time that I do the mentorship is uh, to first just to equip them and um, to equip, transform, and impact. And transformation comes by the word of God. Mm -hmm. That is the best way you can transform someone's life. Okay. And uh, as an organization, we always say that uh, one of the things that we believe is we're not giving, we are not giving young ladies opinion, because the social media is full of opinions. Yes. Our environment is full of opinions. Life is full of opinions. Mm. But what is that one thing I can hold on to? Yeah. If I tell you the truth, mm -hmm. you will hold on to that truth. It will help you in five years to time. Absolutely. To come. Mm. And uh, we also just do uh, the... Because in Kenya, we have a period of poverty, and it is really at a rise. Okay. And uh, because girls tend to let like, if I lack a pad, I'll go to a guy and just tell him, you know what? Fifty uh, bob. You pay pads. fifty bob your pad. Yeah. The guy will tell you, you know what? For you to, uh, for me to give you that fifty bob, uh, undress. You know, let's have yeah. sex. And so those are the things that you, the, you into the organization are trying to fight and curb. Yes. Be able to step in and provide for them as you mentor them. Yes. Encouraging them to work hard. We have a bit of feedback here for you. Okay. Um, good morning. I just woke up and tuned to switch. I can't even change the channel. I can't relate to her story currently um, to a certain extent. Pregnant in first year and almost delivering. I'd love to hear how she made it through her pregnancy and motherhood. I see that SMS came in a bit earlier, so I'm sure they have been following up on the conversation. Good morning, Mikali. I really hate, I, I really relate with Mwenja's story. I used to be... I used to be raped by a priest when I was young, and that left a scar in my life up till today. Did you ever go through counseling of the things that you did way before you even got pregnant, you know, dealing with the grief, your mom forgiving your dad? Did, did that ever happen? Uh, I did that uh, and on my 21st birthday. Like, okay. I gave it as, my, like, as a gift to myself. Okay. So I, uh, I asked friends around and just asked someone, who, uh, where can I get a good counselor? Because all that, all that time, everyone was telling me, you know what, you can be strong. Uh, people talk to you, but... It's tiring sometimes to yeah. be strong, right? Sometimes you just want to be vulnerable and let yeah, everything and out. Yeah, and let everything out. Yeah. And uh, we understand, uh, just don't worry, you know, uh, things will be fine. So I decided, you know what, I am tired of being told, like, you're strong. I'm really not strong. So you got help. So and I you gifted yourself. I gifted myself as my 21st birthday. I saved up and I went through a counseling session. Great. And um, as we come to the end of this conversation, and what would be your parting shot, your word of encouragement? And also please share with us how we can contribute towards the, um, the foundation to just help you continue the journey that you're on. Uh, well, um, First and foremost, I'll just also want to just, uh, I'm having a makeup workshop on on the 28th of uh, October. 28th of October next month, yes. The next month, it will be still in Babandogo. Mm -hmm. And for you just to reach out or uh, to reach out to me is, you can DM me through my Instagram pages mm -hmm. at uh, Moenja Ann mm -hmm. or my business account is, um, my number is 07. Mm -hmm. 0731-730378. Just say that again. 0731-730378.
So that is the number they can get through to you for anything at all. Yes. When it comes to the foundation, when it, when it comes, comes to, to makeup, the workshop and everything. Yes, that is my number. You can get through me through that number. And I'd just like to say thank you for sharing this story with us today and for encouraging, empowering. I see our SMSs. There are people who relate, wondering what it is that you did and they can do for themselves as well to just be better or find peace as well. So do not stop. And even with the Kibira girls, keep doing what it is that you're doing. We're Thank here you so for much. it all. We're going to take a very short commercial break. We'll be right back. This is Full Circle with Mukana.